Thermal pads or thermal paste? The thermal paste I'll be using for testing is the CryoRig CP7 High Density Cryo Paste. And the application method I'll be using is slightly larger than a pea-sized dot to ensure that the integrated heat spreader is fully covered, just like the thermal pads. <laughs> The two CPU coolers I'll be using for testing is the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B and the Noctua NHU-12S. Both of these CPU coolers were in my last video in the upper right hand corner of the screen where I put them up against each other using thermal pads to see which one would better dissipate heat. The Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B at full load with the thermal pads topped out at about 90-91 degrees Celsius and the Noctua NHU-12S also with thermal pads topped out at about 85 to 87 degrees Celsius. Let's get the Scythe Mugen 5 Revision B installed and let's see if we can get the temperatures under 90 degrees Celsius by using thermal paste. Alright, the Scythe Mugen 5 is up and running. I'm using my blue finger keyboard mouse headset mouse pad combo to get into the BIOS and we are overclocked to 4.9 gigahertz. I'm going to reboot into Windows and start the stress testing. Alright, we are booted into the operating system. I have real temp over here on the left and I have Prime 95 over here on the right. We're going small FFTs, AVX disabled, kick off the test and I'll get back to you. Alright, so this test has been running and we are operating at the same ambient temperature as my last video, which is 66 degrees Fahrenheit. And we are looking at an improvement in thermals. It looks like the Scythe Mugen 5 came down two to three Celsius going from thermal pads to thermal paste. Let's disassemble the Scythe Mugen 5 and install the Noctua NHU-12S to see if we can bring down temperatures even further. Alright, the NHU-12S is installed, we're idling at about 33 to 39 degrees Celsius on the two hottest cores. The stress test in my last video with the thermal pads peaked out at about an 85 to 87 degrees Celsius. We're going to use Prime 95 with small FFTs and AVX disabled and we'll see what we get for thermal results. Alright, the Noctua NHU-12S has been running. We are still at 66 degrees Fahrenheit ambient temperature. The thermal compound is operating two to three Celsius cooler than the thermal pads. Well, there you have it. The Noctua NHU-12S was able to bring down temperatures even further by a few degrees Celsius. However, I still would recommend thermal compound over thermal pads for high-end systems and system longevity as a whole. This is primarily because I have not had a chance yet to test thermal pads on high-end systems or had a chance to use thermal pads for an extended period of time. If you're not subscribed already, consider doing so because in the next video, I'm going to be overclocking the i5-2500K even further. I'd like to at least hit five gigahertz now that I have the Noctua NHU-12S with thermal compound to see how well it can do with the GTX 980 in games for 2019.